Coming up, a phone everybody wants but can't buy, and a phone no one wants but is easy to buy. Plus, we'll go driving with Tanya and her new Papa Go Dash Cam and a Thunderbolt docking system. It's all coming up next. Time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hey, welcome to Before You Buy, the product review show that's got a little bit of a different twist. We get some of the greatest, latest products in here. In some cases, like this one, something that was really hard to get. And then we ask our staff to use it as, as in the real world so you get a, a, an experience of what it would be like to actually own the product. And this first product is one that is so hot right now that Expansus, which I, I buy a lot of my unlocked phones from, is scalping it for 200 bucks above list price. That's crazy. Although... You can't um, get it. You got to get an invite. A, you can't get it, and B, the device is actually really good. This is so. The, if it was to come out at that cost, people probably would have spent spent that money on. They're charging five hundred bucks. It's mm -hmm. three hundred bucks for the sixteen gigabyte version. Right. We're talking about the one, one plus, plus one. one. We previewed it last week, so yes, it is back. But I spent a whole week with it, so but I knew things to talk you're about. You're right. For a high-end smartphone, five hundred bucks is even affordable. Yeah, it really is. Which I mean, we're used how... to seeing like six hundred fifty dollars yeah. for an unlocked high-end smartphone. So tell us about this one plus one. Uh, it looks like it's big. Yeah, it's definitely big. It's a 5.5 inch display, 1080p display, super sharp. I was actually super happy with uh, the quality of the display and just using it over time. It has really nice kind of brightness and sunlight, all that kind of stuff. It's a non-removable 3100 milliamp hour battery. Oh, that's pretty big. Back here somewhere that you can't get to, of course. Yeah. But 3100's ample, and I gotta say, man, the battery performance on here was great. Uh, minus a few issues, which I'll we'll talk about in a few minutes, but uh, it has a 13 megapixel rear-facing camera um, that takes some pretty pretty great pictures, although, you know, the standard kind of, there we go. Hey, Brian, you found it. A uh, brick so, wall. So, yeah, so that's brick wall. That's which our you, alley that's, out back. That's out back, but <laughs> if you zoom in, it's got great detail, though, probably on here, you know, again. Oh, look at that. Nice that really looks good. Yeah. Looks really sharp and bright sunlight. Um, what else do we have here? So Aww. this was really low light, and actually, I really like the effect that it made. It was early in the morning before the, the sun was just kind of starting to kind of you know brighten up the sky and everything yet really sharp kind of detail on uh, my youngest daughter this was last night okay this is rear facing camera with super low light at night time are you using the flash no no this is no flash i think the next one has the flash it has those dual <laughs> led and i'm frowning at both for some reason now everybody wants these because mm -hmm. it balances the white balance and the white balance does look good yeah it looks all right um i'm not a huge that's fan of very flash. green this What's is front that? front facing camera ah. front facing camera no alterations still it brightened it up i had hardly any light on in that room this is without hdr um Boy, that and then the next one is with. So you see a little oh. bit of that extra. Although I gotta say, I took a lot of pictures with HDR and it almost does too much of the it's effect. It's extreme, it's more than a lot of cameras. Yeah, you, you really, the more you use it, the more you recognize yeah. how much processing is there. This is just your token awe photo. That's the best looking family ever, uh, look at them. I agree. I totally Aww. agree. Um, and then I think this was a video. Yeah, so this is kind of video quality. A little bit of the rubber uh, CMOS uh, rolling shutter. Yeah, when you're kind of when you're kind of moving around. But I gotta say, quality is pretty sharp. Well, this is good enough to be your family camera, it's isn't it? Good. Yeah. No, I was really happy with the performance of the camera. How's and, it sound? Uh, sound? Sounds pretty good. Yeah. Sounds great. Uh, good <laughs> stereo separation too. When you're listening to it in headphones. Uh, she was trying to eat the peanut with Aww. the shell. I was trying to tell her, no, you can't do that. Aww. I can't, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I was pretty happy with the camera. Uh, let's see here, what else? It is unlocked. And oh, we I, were wondering about that. So you found out it comes. The biggest thing is a cyanogen mod as the firmware. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, without unlocking it, just it, the way it is. That's right. Cyanogen mod 11s, which is a special version of cyanogen mod, which means you get a lot of you know customization. If I go into the settings here and kind of show you, there's this whole personalization section down mm -hmm. here. You know, uh, cyanogen mods 
home screen is trebuchet or trebuchet, however you want to say that. So that allows you to do a lot of different things like hide the icon labels. I like that. Um, or, you know, show them however you want, the search bar, all that kind of stuff. You can go in there and do that. You know what I like, though? Despite the fact that they've got a lot of additional customizations, it still looks like a plain Google Android phone. And that's, I think, one of the big positives of this, right? This is kind of the best of both worlds. Um, so often we're used to seeing a modified version of Android that looks nothing like Android. This really does operate and perform like stock Android. I, I, it's like it's like a Android Plus. It's Android with some bells and whistles that are actually very useful, similar in some ways to the Moto X, right? Um, one thing I think I showed briefly last week is that it has certain screen off things. So like I did a V. Oh, wow. And that Turn turns on the on flashlight. The flashlight um, which is great. It's also, you got to be careful with it. Many, many times I would pull the phone out of my pocket and the flashlight was on. Oh, that's not good. Or like <laughs> last night when I was writing up this review, no yeah. joke, this happened at like 12 o'clock at night, getting ready to go to bed, and suddenly this band, Tree People, loud guitar rock band, starts playing in my pocket as loud as the phone is, and everybody's asleep, and I'm scrambling to turn it off because it just fired off in my pocket. So, you know, you can turn that off, thankfully, but when that happened and I didn't catch it, it hurt the battery. Can you turn off the gestures entirely? Is yes. that what's going on? The yes. gestures are waking it up. Exactly. Because it's a double tap to wake up. That, and you can actually turn them all off independently. So you can select which ones you want, which ones you don't. So I, you know, personally, I would probably turn them all off except the double tap to, to turn on. Because see, it's interesting. At least that times out, you know what I mean? My HTC One also has the double yeah. tap to turn on, and I always find it's on in my pocket yeah. when I don't expect it. So that's a good thing. I might turn that off. So, yeah. You I mean, it's handy. Be careful. It is very handy, but you just got to be careful with it. For some reason, it was just firing off all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, performance-wise, this is running the latest... The the Snapdragon 801 processor, 2.5 gigahertz uh, quad-core CPU. It's the same as the S5, the Galaxy S5. And, uh, you know, everything's super snappy and fluid. I mean, there's just no question that this is high high performance. Three gigs of RAM, so you're not running out of, of uh, you know, any, <laughs> any RAM underneath the hood. You're going to get everything that you uh, throw at this thing. That seems pretty good. Are there any negatives? Um, well, let's see here. So design-wise... Um, one thing I find a little strange, so you've got the on-screen buttons down here, right? If I go to the buttons mode and then I turn that on, you'll see down here, you can hardly see it, but down there are capacitive buttons. And they, when they light up, I mean, even in real life, you can hardly see them. You can't even see I them I can't the see camera. them at all. No, I know. And That's it, full light? This is full light. This is as bright as they ever get. Um, and the order is different. So it's really oh. kind of backwards. It's like you have the option, which is nice, of capacitive versus on-screen, but they're backwards, and if you do use the capacitive, you can hardly ever see them anyways. Backwards, so. you mean that the leftmost one is recent apps? Yeah. The I'm center one is home, and the right the, one? No, the leftmost one is menu, even. Okay. The rightmost one is back, and the center that's one is Samsung home. That's Samsung style. And it yeah, me it's nuts. very, very weird. Yeah, but you, you don't know, have to use that, so that's the good you news. You don't, no, you don't have to use All that, right. of course. You can turn that off, which is what I did, and I don't mind sacrificing a little screen real estate. Yeah, screen that's how for it's, that. that's the Android way. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, on a, to be quite honest, the cons, there are very few. Uh, the invite process, I would say, is probably one of the biggest, right? Yeah, we still can't figure that out. It's obviously good marketing, but it's really severely limiting and, the and I wonder to buy, to buy this. I wonder at what point, if any point, they lift this and just say, all right, it's available to everyone. Because it's already been a couple of months, and there is no indication on their site, if you go to their site, as far as like... If I want to buy, what is my option? Your option really is to play a contest or know someone that has one. And that's really it. That's it. So, you know, it's very limiting. Everybody wants top quality hardware, low price, uh, but you have to kind of like know somebody or well, get really lucky to get it. And that's just fact, kinda, nobody likes that. That's how we got it. We should yes, thank. Absolutely. Casey Mills is the gentleman who reached out to us and said, hey, I have one. Uh, it's unopened if you would like it. It's yours, thank so we you, paid Casey. it for that. So thank you, Casey. I'm sure you tried to get an invite. I've asked for an invite. Oh, yeah. All of us have tried to we get an invite. We were scouring. We, nobody could get one. Now they're kind of releasing a little bit more. I feel like uh, since you know since we got this, I've had a few more people. In fact, I gave out one on Twitter because someone's okay. someone hit me up on Twitter and said, uh, expires in three hours and I have no one for it. What can you do? And I just put the call out and whatever. So, so at 300 bucks yeah. for 16 gigs, three... 350 50, for 64 gigs. For 64 That's gigs. That's what you do. If you get this, you get the Spend the, the money. Gig. Yeah. Three, it's such a good deal. Yeah. If this were widely available, it seems to me 
this would be our standard recommendation. I mean, it's right at the top, right? Um, of all the kind of top of the line devices right now running Android, this is, I mean, this is probably in your top three. So Absolutely. I'm guessing no a question. buy. Uh, definitely a buy. I'd say pros, bang for your buck. The performance, the cyanogen mod uh, is really more like stock plus stock on steroids of Android. And then the cons, like I said, they were kind of hard to come by, but uh, or come up with, but the invite process is just kind of lame. The gesture shortcuts, you just got to be kind of careful with those. And uh, the size, it's large. It's not for everybody. Not everybody's going to feel comfortable with a 5.5 inch phone. Jason Howell, you're going to go on a trip. Are you going to take that phone with you? or are you I'm going to go ahead and give this to I'm, you. I'm going to make you a deal. I'll trade you this Amazon Fire phone. <gasps> and we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, I can't wait. This has <laughs> six cameras. Okay, fine. You win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming up in just a bit, uh, we will have a review of the Fire phone. But first, let's go over to a Padre's Corner. He's in the corner right now to give us a review of a docking station. Now, how many of you have laptops you'd love to get home plug it in and have all access to all the ports you could ever desire uh well padre's got one a thunderbolt docking station from StarTech. let's take a look not too long ago i took a look at the StarTech usb 3.0 dock a very interesting device that took a single usb 3.0 port in and then turned it into multiple usb 3.0 ports out along with hdmi vga dvi ethernet and audio Pretty much everything you might need if you wanted to dock your laptop. It was a good device, but we had some people who complained saying, But Padre, I only use Thunderbolt. What am I to do? Well, first, don't 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 do that. That's that's annoying. And secondly, StarTech has got you covered. The TB Dock HD PBC is StarTech's Thunderbolt laptop docking station with HDMI, mini display port, and gigabit Ethernet. That's a mouthful to say and a horrible model number, so I'm going to call it the StarTech ThunderDock. The ThunderDock is a relatively inexpensive way for users to finally unlock the potential of their Thunderbolt ports. While some Thunderbolt devices are relatively inexpensive, they typically lack the ability to be daisy-chained. Other devices may be full-featured, but they're crazy expensive. What StarTech has done with the ThunderDock is to combine some of the most requested devices into a single box and sell it for a relatively low price. The ThunderDock is about the size of a TV remote at 7.4 inches by 4.9 inches by 2.8 inches wide and just over 14 ounces heavy. It comes with a power brick, power cables for every corner of the planet, Thunderbolt cable, and a detachable weighted base so it can operate with either a horizontal or vertical orientation. With the ThunderDock, one port enters, many ports leave. The rear of the device is decked out with two USB 3.0 ports, two Thunderbolt ports with mini DisplayPort compatibility, an HDMI jack, and gigabit Ethernet. The front of the ThunderDock adds a third USB 3.0 port and audio jack. Using the ThunderDock is simple. Powered up, connect one of the Thunderbolt ports to your properly equipped Mac or Windows PC, then connect USB, HDMI, Ethernet, audio, and additional Thunderbolt peripherals at will. The HDMI port supports a maximum resolution of 1920 by 1080, while the pass-through Thunderbolt slash mini display port can support monitors with resolutions of up to 2560 by 1440. Video quality was smooth with no jitter, skip frames, or system hiccups, even with motion-rich video and USB transfers happening simultaneously. Unlike some USB to display adapters, Thunderbolt connected video displays, even those running through adapters, have no lag. Seeing the laptop screen alongside either the display port or HDMI connected screen shows no discernible lag even when the video adapter was taxed with multiple streams of HD video. One note of caution. If you're planning on using the Thunderbolt pass-through to connect a natively equipped Thunderbolt monitor, you can display both the Thunderbolt and HDMI output simultaneously. However, if you want to use the mini display port functionality, it's either or. Plugging in an HDMI-enabled display will disable the mini display port functionality. Beyond the video capabilities, the ThunderDock gives you full-spec 10 gigabit per second Thunderbolt connectivity, as well as 5 gigabit per second USB 3.0. The ThunderDock supports USB-attached SCSI protocol, or UASP, for faster transfers. When we tested transfer rates with Crystal Disk Mark on our Windows box, the scores from a USB 3.0 flash drive connected through the ThunderDock were almost identical to the scores of the same drive directly connected to our test system. Just for giggles, we plugged the same drive into a USB 2.0 port, and, well, let's just say that if you have a system with USB 2.0 and Thunderbolt, 
you definitely want a Thunderbolt to USB 3.0 adapter. The Gigabit Ethernet port worked as promised. There have been reports of glitches in getting both Windows and Mac computers to recognize the Ethernet port, but our test unit was up and running in seconds. In all, the StarTech ThunderDock is an excellent addition to the desk of anyone using a Thunderbolt-equipped notebook. It's fast, relatively low-priced, and nearly bulletproof. The StarTech Thunderbolt laptop docking station is available now with a two-year warranty. You can find it online for under $200. Well, there you go. The StarTech... Do, is the company StarTech.com, I guess. StarTech.com. And the, the model has that really weird name, like TB Dock. So I just call it the Thunder Dock. It's the StarTech Thunder Dock. How many PCs have Thunderbolt? I thought this was a Mac-only thing. Very, very few. In fact, I had to send back the PC I had that had Thunderbolt uh, because it was a review unit. Right. So I had to finish the review on Macs. But, yeah, there are a few. It, it does work, and it works fantastically on PCs, but it, it really is a Mac You have to have peripheral. a PC in yeah. yeah. And it's Thunderbolt 1, not Thunderbolt 2. Correct, correct. Uh, well, well, I, mean, I you, don't know if that makes much of a difference. No, you will get full 10 gigabits per second uh, transfer on this Thunderbolt bus, and you'll get full 5 gigabit transfer on the USB 3.0 ports, so you're not really going to be you're transfer not limited. Okay, right? good. So pros and cons. Pros and cons. Well, the pros is the price is right, especially when you consider that this is a Thunderbolt pass-through device, which tend to be way more expensive. One eighty-five to two hundred dollars. It's it's a sweet spot. You're not going to find anything else that's this good for okay. that price. The other two. The other thing is ports. Lots and lots of ports. All all the best. It's you three USB 3.0 ports. The Display Port, the Thunderbolt pass-through, the Ethernet, the HDMI. That's all fantastic. On the con side, the it's not really a limitation of the dock, it's a limitation of Thunderbolt. You can run two displays on this, but it has to be HDMI and a Thunderbolt, a native Thunderbolt and that's display. that's because it's Thunderbolt 1. Thunderbolt 2 Correct. will give you two Correct. full res displays. Now, because if you plug in a uh, DisplayPort adapter, which you can, right. it kills the HDMI right. port. Right, Yeah, and, and the other thing is, there, it's, it's an almost not plug and play for some Macs. If you have an older Mac running an older version of OS X, Sometimes it has issues with sleep, and sometimes it has issues with the Ethernet port. I didn't find that on any of the machines that I've tested, but I, I've read plenty of reports from people who say it doesn't always work the And first that may time. not be a StarTech problem. That may be an Apple problem. I think problem. it is. I yeah. think it's an Apple problem. So, uh, buy? Don't buy? Try? Uh, this is an absolute buy. I mean, if... It, we actually bought some. We did. Yeah, so, we did <laughs> buy. We bought many of these. If you are looking for a way to replicate the ports on your MacBook, or even better, if you have an older MacBook that has Thunderbolt but no USB 3.0, right. absolutely pick one of these up. Father Robert Ballas there, the host of This Week in Enterprise Tech Know How Coding 101. And soon, very excited, Padres Corner, which launches like two weeks from two now. Two weeks. Yep. Very good. What day will that be? Tuesdays, 7.30 p.m. you got to watch so it. That's exciting. I'm really happy for you. Thank you, Father Robert. Hey, let's take a walk over here to uh, say hello to Tanya Hall. She's the host of Marketing Mavericks, produces this show and others, does a lot of booking for us. And we knew you were an unsafe driver, so we've arranged. <laughs> no. Right we're, over the back. we're having Tanya uh, test what looks like a, that looks like a rear view mirror. It does. What is it? It is the Papago Go Safe 260. So Dash does can you use it as your rear view mirror or no? You can, um, and that's a part of the feature is it is actually clips really easily onto your rear view mirror right here. Uh -huh. So it's got some... Uh, yeah, you snap it on. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you can see in the rear view mirror, but you then can. there's also a camera facing the other way so that while you're looking at the mirror here... It's looking at the world outside. That is, that, is true. Is it making noise? <laughs> it is, is making it noise. Is it going me? So what happens is you actually have to have it plugged in. It does not come with this cord. It actually comes with a cord that you put into your cigarette, cigarette lighter. Ah, okay. And it automatically turns on the minute that you start your car. It automatically turns off. Um, actually, it goes for like a, a minute, I think, after, uh, maybe not a full minute, but just a brief few seconds after you turn your car off. Yeah. And, and... It fits right over your rearview mirror. So here's the, it is design wise, it's plastic, it's kind of bulky. My interior of my vehicle is not black. It is actually tan. So it really was it obvious. It clashed a little bit. With it your did. Camera, and huh? it was really obvious. I got a lot yeah. of dirty looks around yeah. Petaluma, is all I'm saying. <laughs> and you can I see it has a micro SD card slot. It is does. That, is that, so it's recording to that? Correct. Okay. So that is what it records to. And it, and it will not actually record, obviously, without that in there. Um, it will turn on, it just won't record. This camera is adjustable, so you can point it up, 
You can point it down to the You'll, sides. Now, now, where's the feedback coming from? Is it going to show an image of what the camera is seeing here? It will. Here? So, um, You're kidding. So, right here is so not only is it a mirror, but it's also showing what's ahead. It does. And it's actually, oh. a, a, it's, so this is actually much smaller. The, the viewing image is smaller than a lot of its other competitors, which is good because it gives you yeah, more well, mirror space. Yeah. But the mirror itself uh, is actually one of my least favorite uh, pieces of it because even though you have more viewable, you can see more inside your vehicle, but it gets smaller outside. And it's very dark, if you can see. It's really dark. It's not a super great mirror, in other words. It is a bad mirror. Let me and see if I can do it my makeup It is actually kind of it. unsafe, I think, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Put on I your see, lipstick. It's not, it's not great. Can you see yourself, ladies and gentlemen, in there? There you are. I yeah. did use it to put on my lipstick. <laughs> um, I was worried that actually got caught on camera. I had the editor no, look at that. We didn't see it. Yeah, okay. we didn't see it. So the cable it comes with is really long. Um, yeah, you know, I, I was to... showing people, I don't know if they know it, but I plugged into the, so it plugs into the top so you'll run mm -hmm. the cable down through there. So you're going to have a cable down your You're either going to have a cable windshield. just sitting, or you can, w exactly. You have plenty Why? of cable it's long to wire to go it around. all the way around. Okay. Exactly. That's and that's what it's intended for. Um, the... The this 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 monitor is very difficult to see because of the angle of the rearview mirror. So while you're driving, which probably is well, yeah, you don't want to steer safe. using that. That's more for aiming the camera probably than anything. Well, this else, right? and this can uh, actually focus in. So if you wanted to focus in on something, so for example, somebody's license plate, you could do that. <laughs> Or, Take a picture of that. But but here's the problem. About at about 25 feet, when you um, Zach actually did, I I used this product as well as Zach, our editor, got some uh, some B-roll for this. And what happened was when you try to get really close to a car and you're trying to actually get their license plate, even at 25 feet, you really can't focus in on the license plate. Um, as far as the camera Jeez, quality, Louise, I'm I glad he has this. <laughs> camera this guy's speeding through the he, parking garage he is a speeder no. so it's caught on camera now. we need that? to add to this do not try this at home untrained should, driver yeah. on open course but you can see how it adjusts to light see how it quickly adjusts which is actually you know, good i'm amazed at how good the, the image is the, the quality is actually good the camera quality and is you very see good. date and time stamp that's mm -hmm. important okay so um it does not blink two and a half x speed watch out there's that's baby. us <laughs> yeah <laughs> it does not do but that i see track. you can't see the, now, even if you like took a still of that and zoomed in would you be able to read the license or it not? was very difficult most okay. of the time we were not see right there yeah. you can see it's very difficult to see the license yeah. plate okay. um but you know so that could be a drawback for sure i, mean, I know these are very popular and from the standpoint of the quality of the video, it's good. You can also take stills. So if you wanted to take stills, you could. Something else that's kind of neat is if you wanted to um, create like an audio track of what There's you're- There's my car. Uh-oh. I was able to see that license plate. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. <laughs> um, if you wanted to actually have an audio, you know, inside the, it actually, this is inside, it was actually much easier in the dark to see okay. the license plate. So he's, the he's using the zoom buttons to do there that. There is a zoom, zoom right. So. Yeah. Now, here's a question. A lot of dash cams record all the time, but only save the last few minutes. Or if there's an accident, save it. Is this saving it all It saves the it time? all of the time. Hey, oh. hey, get that Slurpee. <laughs> Petaluma. What is this, Glee? What kind of? Oh, man. Punk kids Give, we have Can, can we rewind that and see if we could spot who that was? <laughs> <laughs> I want to find that perp. That was a perfectly good slushie. Yeah, wow. It looked like a rainbow slushie. Oh, now I want Okay, one. wait a minute. Slow down. Who is it? Wait a minute. It's you. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. Wow. <laughs> nice, Whoa, look nice at that. Nice shot. Nice shot, Wow. Zach. Do we know that person or was that actually an <laughs> that incident? That was a fan of Twit. Oh. They said, stop driving around. Get back to the show. <laughs> Get back to work. Get back to work. Um, so it actually does record all of the time. And also what's really neat is... <laughs> Here we go in the car wash to get rid of the slushy. Okay, good. Well, it was important. Um, but, but it does adjust to the lighting. But, but So the thing about recording is it continues to record. So let's say... Um, it doesn't just stop recording at the, um, at the you know, if you run out of space, it actually will re, it will start recording. It goes back to the beginning. Over old. Okay, so, that's okay. Which is good, which is that's good. That's okay, yeah. So you don't, if you accidentally forget or you yeah. don't, you know, realize it's not recording, it, it's always recording. So okay. you have that. And if you have, so how much space does it use up? I mean, if you have a 32 gig SD, micro SD card in there, it's probably hours, right? Yeah. So yeah. in fact, we didn't use up all the space, but we okay. did a lot of driving around. I, I, you know, lots of pretty scenery around here. 
Um, so the audio quality is good. And I was saying if you wanted to create like a notebook, if you wanted to have, you know, if you're going on a family trip and you wanted yeah. to talk about what the, you were seeing, have the video. that might be kind yeah. of fun. Again, it's really obvious. I got a lot of dirty looks. It was kind of a Google Glass kind of experience. Oh, so think. people could tell they were getting Yeah, people knew. Filmed. People were looking at me. Um, it, this does explain a lot because we got your expense report featuring one slushy and one car wash. <laughs> and I couldn't really figure out what was going on there. So now I understand mm, that was good. part of the testing. Give us the pros and cons of the pop-up. Go! Easy installation. It was mm -hmm. super easy. It just clips on. Not hard to install at all. Um, of course, you will have to install the cord. But, yeah. you know, outside of that, um, the good quality camera for driving, um, wide viewing range, which is, is more than than most of the other um, similar cameras, video snapshot options. You could actually just do a snapshot if you wanted to. You didn't have to do the whole video. And it's got anti-glare for evening, which is actually kind of nice. Right. Cons are, it's an eyesore. It was Ugly. really obnoxious. Yeah. It stood out. Um, Not a it, great mirror either. No. So that might be a and, and actually, exactly. That was, um, it was hard to see the video, by the way, while you're driving, which probably you shouldn't see. But the most thing, that th the thing that I st uh, st stood out the most was the fact that you actually cannot see in the mirror very well. And yeah. I felt actually unsafe. Yeah. In the, yeah. Uh, with the uh, okay. Go Safe 260. This should be really so. a mirror. Yeah, it, not, it, not a two way. It, they should focus more on the mirror because yeah. I felt I felt it didn't it's make like me feel secure. It's like a one way secure. mirror kind of sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, how much? It is actually um, not a bad price compared to some of its competition. It's one seventy on Amazon. You can get it as cheap as that. It's 1080p actually a discount. video, hundred seventy yep. bucks. Um, uh, what do you say? Buy. Don't it buy. is a don't buy. Don't buy because of the because of the fact that the rear view mirror. Lots of other things were great, Ugly. but if they could get the rear view mirror, I would say buy it. But but we have recommended a couple of the other Papago products. So in fact, we had a Papago Go Safe three thirty that we did list as a buy. So maybe that's a better option. But if the rear view mirror isn't important to you, then I don't know. But I thank you, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Tanya Hall. She's the host of Marketing Mavericks. Seen on most of these NBC stations. No, actually, it's seen Thursday, well, Friday now. You do it Friday evening. Monday night. Mon okay. <laughs> <laughs> every Friday morning or Monday night. Well, you watch it on iTunes, right? I watch it live every single week. So thank you so much. It's great to have you, thank uh, Tanya you. Hall. Now, we have coming up the Amazon Fire Phone. I'm going to show you that. But before we do that, we gave Sarah Lane, who is the host of, of course, iPad Today, Tech News Tonight, but most importantly, i5 for the iPhone. An interesting uh, kind of quality lens for her iPhone. It's kind of a goofy well, thing you put on your you know, your iPhone. Right. It's from a company called I don't even know how you say this. Z Stylus. 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 It's it's like stylus but with a Z in front of it. And But look at this. This is yeah, okay. This is so, like a big, this has turned your phone into something about the size of a point and shoot camera. Yeah, this is a two parter. Okay, so these are, we've got two different products oh, here. Oh, those are mix and match. The, okay. But they, but they go together, they have to. So for $60, you've got these camera accessories, which I'll show you in a second. Okay. For an extra $40, you actually have the case itself, and, and you, that's what's around my iPhone right now. But or you have to you, buy the case, though, because you couldn't use the you accessory have to. without it. Now, here's the deal I like to think I'm not a complete fool so i thought all right well i'll just you know put this all together and see how it goes and i couldn't figure it out so i'm looking at you know the trying to figure where's the how do i manual and everything you have, actually have to go to the site and watch a youtube video that they have up on the site <laughs> to understand how to put it together now once you do that it's pretty easy what, what's cool is it does look like a camera i mean it you've does. got a camera button I yeah mean, it really turns your iphone and it with a, it's just a camera with a big viewfinder so here but here's the, okay so this it's, so it's show a little, it to this camera back oh, here okay, so they can back see here. It. okay yeah. so it's a little bit wonky right i've got the camera accessory on here and by the way even if you only were to buy the case it is kind of like a neat little case got a little kickstand here but you take the kickstand off and you put yeah. the yeah. camera accessory on all right and then what you have to do is it's kind of hard to <laughs> Like, again, trial and error. We're going to watch a YouTube video on how to take it off. Let's see if I can. How do I do? How do I show you guys? Z T Y L U S. Stylus. Yeah. Stylus with a you Z. You kind of have to get it just right. There are, well, that's all right. Oh, wait a minute. So there, that's before you take a picture. You have to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is nothing. That is that's just where nothing? the lenses live inside. Oh. That is lens storage. Got it? Right. Okay, so once you've got these open, and by the way, they're marked. This one happens to be the, um, oh gosh, it's a, it's FL, which stands for, look inside here. FL. Remind me. Faster than light. Fo Focal yeah, length. Yeah, but no, they call it something else. Um, it's the fisheye length. Fisheye lens. Fish lens. So what you do is you open it up. 
And I thought, well, that's weird. I mean, it doesn't it even flops. flip in there. It doesn't it click and... It actually does. There's a little... There's a there's an area that's about the size of what the, oh, and then you what snap the actual it in. iPhone lens is. Well, let's is. see what that is going to make it look like. Okay, so if you, I was to take you a... you put your camera on. If right? I were to take a fisheye photo here. Yeah. Right? Oh. So you can see there that I'm looking How at... How attractive is that? Yeah, no, I'll take a picture of you really quick and then okay. I'll show people. Let's get up close, you know, let's... let's fisheyes allow you to do good big... Giant yeah. nose. Everybody has a huge nose. So when you look at the photo. <laughs> I want that. Can, can I have that picture? It, it can, <laughs> of course. It's your new profile picture for sure. You look so <laughs> Hobbit-like. It's great. It's really good. So Many that, people don't know that's actually how they do the Hobbit. Right. It's just with the it's yeah. with this it's all in product. camera. It's only ninety dollars. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so you, that is one of the lenses. There's also a polarizing filter lens. Now that one, I, I I was playing around with it a little bit at my desk, okay, and I couldn't so get it to sound very interesting. Rotate that, and then yeah. you flip it out. Yeah. So you've got three different lenses that oh, pop out I here. Get it. I get so it. So this here's here's my polarizing wow. filter here. This is actually more for something that you'd be taking out on a bright sunny day. Right. You know, which right. which will help uh, with glare and yeah. and and kind of make colors a little bit truer in something like a studio sense. Mm. Well, it wouldn't help here, but it's You're like the polarizing it sunglasses. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And okay. then you've got a macro setting as well. So if I go ahead and change it again, <laughs> you better not be in a hurry to take a picture because this is going to take a while. Well, it's like I'm sorry, it's the just sort of, stand there. I've got to yeah. get my lens. Oh, look, out. a beautiful ladybug. <laughs> Stay still, ladybug. Don't move, ladybug. Here comes <laughs> Let me my... get my macro lens out. <laughs> it is a little wonky. It is. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie about here, that. Let's see I do what the macro lens looks like. Okay, so a, well. Here's the thing. So you've got a wide-angle lens. Yeah. This one's actually a two-parter. You've got the wide-angle lens, and yeah. then if you actually take that off, yeah. which goes, which goes, <laughs> shush, you guys. I'm trying to show you how it works. Which goes this way. Oh, it does. I did this two seconds ago. You unscrew the thing. All right. One of these, the wide-angle lens is on top of the macro lens. Right. So this is actually right. a two for one. Right. Now that's going to give you quite a few moving that's parts. That's how here a number we go. of other are. lens systems work for the iPhone. I've yeah. seen that before. So this is my new macro. Right. That's underneath the wide angle. Oh, there. Now snap that on. You snap that on. And now you got. And then well, what? It's the front facing oh, camera. But okay. You got yeah, a picture of yourself. I did actually look. Um, I, I played around with this, and it actually works quite well. So macro. The idea of macro is you get a close up. That's like right. Of an insect or something like that. The iPhone camera is pretty nice. Doesn't the flash up, get but you, blocked by that? This is not. Yeah, I mean, you. This is. This Forget is, the flash. <laughs> you know, it's gone. It's not for low light situations. It's, wait, wait you, the, the case blocks the flash. The case blocks the flash. The, what the case won't block is power. Um, also, if you've got, if you don't Can have, you your, use headphones with it. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. the headphone jack. Because it has a little portal there, so you get right access that's right right. to it. That's okay. right. The, uh, the volume and All of the there. on and off stuff yeah. is there. Hard to reach. For some reason, reach. I have a very hard time showing you backwards. It is a little hard to reach, though. Yeah. It is in there. You can, yeah. you can, you can feel it, but it's... I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to. Before we were. You need golem fingers to re long, skinny fingers to reach in there to. I I just I feel like I see a lot of accessories for iPhones, particularly for the camera on the market. It's in your business. It's the, what you do. That's right. So you know, as a as a package deal for ninety bucks, this seems high to me, considering that at least with the test that I took, the the lenses all worked fine, but they weren't like blowing me away. And there are and other you've got products. some moving parts. You're going to lose right, this. Yeah. And yeah, there are other kind of products. I think the best part of it is what it looks like. You yeah. said, oh, that looks cool. It looks like a Leica. I can't even put the darn thing back on. <laughs> pros yeah. and cons. Uh, pros. I think Wait a minute. You mean this button doesn't, this, this top button that looks like you push this to take a picture, that doesn't do anything. No, that's nothing. Oh, that's what you were talking about? No. I you're, thought that was going to You've been fooled. A picture. Well, because you feel like this is the lens, right. but it isn't. Because you is. still have to use the iPhone it's, camera. It's clever camouflage. Exactly. It's a lot of smoke and mirrors. I think the pros are, the case is actually quite solid. I think it feels really good. Um, I think it looks cool. Yeah. Uh, and again, like I mentioned, even if you weren't buying the camera Could connection, case, yeah, right. it's a case, a little kickstand. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Right. Okay. It's, it's kind of got a it's sort of a rugged look. Um, and I think that the design of the camera accessories, once you kind of get the hang of it, is, is kind of neat, right? You've got all these options and they're sort of flipping out, whatever. 
And once you actually have a lens on top of your, uh, your original camera lens and you click it in, it's pretty sturdy. The cons, I don't think the images that it's, it's, it's giving you are th going to wow you that much. Right. It, considering that you have pretty good cameras that aren't that expensive anymore. Or the Allo clip, which we like a lot, which just kind of clips on and that too. does all of the same right. things without all of the bulky cases. Yeah. Oh, and once, if for whatever reason you've got this and you're, I don't know, you're on vacation or wherever and you want to take it off really quickly, you can't. This is a, this is a, it's a few minutes, right? It doesn't just snap on and off because you've got a little screw here yeah. that you, that you attach into place. It's a cool, I think it's a cool idea, but uh, what do you think? Buy, try? I say don't buy. Don't buy. I say it's, 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 it's a novelty, yeah. a, a little accessory. It's kind of fun, but it, it's, it's too expensive for yeah. what it is. I think it's close, but All no right. cigar. No cigar. Sarah Lane, thank you. A no buy for the Zdiles. Sarah's the host of i5 for the iPhone iPad today, Tech News Tonight. In fact, we're going to get it out of your way so you can do Tech News Tonight. But first, oh, thanks. Before that, I've got a phone with six cameras. Would you like to take a look at my... More than anything. Fire phone? Oh, that? <laughs> it says Amazon on the back. It's a big ad for Amazon. This is the Fire phone. Amazon's selling this for $200 with a two-year... Uh, commitment to AT&T. It's AT&T only. That's one of the negatives mm. on this. It doesn't come from any other carrier. Uh, it's a specially redesigned version of Android. They call it Fire OS 3.5. And there are some cool features to the Fire Phone. For one thing, you're seeing, if I show you the lock screen, what uh, Amazon calls dynamic perspective. This is one of the things, in fact, the only thing that those four cameras on the corners are used for, to see where my head is doesn't work unless I put my head right in the shot and then it will you know this is the it's hard to show this off because the camera is not your head but then you can see I can I can kind of look around and see those northern lights behind me this is a uh, one of uh, uh, about uh, 10 lock screens they rotate all of them have time and date and all of them I don't know what this image is of it's uh, it's very odd but let me that's just the lock screen let me get into it now what you're going to see immediately in fact, let me show a picture i just took of uh, sarah lane it's a decent 13 megapixel camera very competitive with most of the other uh, phones on the market today in fact if, if you didn't know sarah you might say is that an iphone because it kind of it looks like maybe even the, an older iPhone with, yeah, a, with a case glass. on it or something. Yeah. Yeah. The this is plastic, not glass. This is uh, yeah. I think it's Gorilla Glass in front. It does have a physical home button, just like the iPhone, uh, and and that's about it. If I press it, uh, I can see a list of applications. Uh, if uh, and and by the way, because it's using Amazon's own store, I can see the applications on the device, but I can also go to the applications I've purchased from the Amazon store at any given time and re-download those. It, if you've used the Amazon Fire tablet, you'll recognize this carousel interface. It shows the most recent things you've done in a carousel. So it has, for instance, its own maps. These are a licensed from Nokia, the Here maps. These also use the dynamic perspective, so I can I don't. I think that's a gimmick. I don't think that adds too much to the value of it. There is a little bit of a use because you can flick it this way. See, I never could get this to work. There you go. If you flick it that way, you'll see a sidebar. You flick it the other way. See, most of the time you just go like that because after a while it's like, well, it doesn't work reliably. And you're going to see another thing when I look at this that's interesting about this carousel interface. If the application has additional data, like this is the map, so it says recommended for you Seattle, San Francisco, New York, or on the camera app, it'll show you pictures you've taken. Uh, that's cool. These are, uh, in, these are messages. These are phone numbers I've called. These are potential settings. But if it's an app from the App Store, it's going to give you an ad for other like apps. Firefly, you might want to check out Gazelle. Here's some music you can buy from the Amazon store. Here's some periodicals you can subscribe to. Here's some other games like Clay Doodle. So this is really a lot of space devoted on this screen to what's essentially an ad for other Amazon products. I'm not crazy about that. You also can't customize this as you could other Android phones. There are no custom launchers or custom keyboards. Fire OS is Fire OS. Um, but most of the 
many of the, not all, but many of the Android apps you're used to have been ported over to it because it's not such a big thing uh, to do. There's no Google apps, so I had to use a $3 authenticator program that's like Google's authenticator because they don't have Google Maps or Google Authenticator or Google Plus or any of the Google apps on here. As you might expect, though, the Amazon uh, ecosystem's well represented. Here's Android books. There's a Kindle reader, of course. You can buy stuff in the store. And that's where the Firefly button's kind of interesting. A physical camera button. When you press it quickly, it'll just launch the camera. And you can take a, a picture or video. But you press it and hold it, it goes into Firefly mode. Now, you see those little Fireflies? They're looking for things that you could buy on Amazon. Let's see if it recognizes the stylus case. So I'm going to put it in the stylus case. It recognizes a lot of things, not just things you can buy, uh, but also, come on, come on there, come on, fireflies. See, they don't know what the hell that is. They're going off to the edge. Give me something else to take a picture of. How about that flashlight? Um, here, maybe you know what this is, Amazon. I'd really like to have this. Buy it in the Amazon store. What do you... Oh, see, the fireflies are gathering. Oh, they're very puzzled. They have no idea what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Here, give me something else I could take a picture of. <laughs> How about that? Now, if there's a barcode on a product, well, it'll always work with the barcode. So it'll immediately know what that is. It sees the barcode. And it's now going to tell me how I can order this fine product at Amazon.com, right? Maybe not. Uh, it has no idea. <laughs> it read the barcode. But it doesn't, and this is, you can see the limitation of this. If you point it at a well-known sculpture or painting, hey, maybe it'll recognize that sculpture or painting. Uh, Amazon demonstrated it, and it seemed to work pretty well in that respect. Uh, let's, uh, let's just delete that from history, because that makes no sense, whatever that was. Let's take another picture. Here, this is something you'll probably uh, recognize, Fire Phone, a picture of the chief twit. Yeah, see, it's, the fireflies are running away as fast as they can. They say, I don't know what the heck that is. So the firefly feature of limited uh, interest, um, it is kind of a showrooming app. You can go into a store, take a picture of a product, and <laughs> if it recognizes it, you can buy the product. The other thing that's kind of interesting, it has Amazon's May Day feature. So if you're uh, lost and you don't know how to use the phone, <coughs> excuse me, it'll actually call somebody and it'll give you live video help. I think that's kind of neat for somebody who's using their first smartphone. But really the thing that galls me is this is an Android phone with a lot of the same Android specs. They're charging the same price as almost all the flagship phones. But it's not a standard Android, and that's a little bit frustrating. I, I, I want Android. In fact, I think if they had made this phone a true Android phone with all these features like May Day and Firefly and Dynamic Perspective, then I could recommend it. So pros and cons is great at Amazon, obviously. It's definitely a pro. It's a nice phone. It's a, you know, a, a, a Snapdragon 800, not the state of the art, but pretty fast quad core. It has these four corner cameras, which give you a dynamic perspective, but nothing else really uses them. I'm hoping Amazon comes up with something else for those cameras. It's got a decent back camera, but in the negatives, it, it's just really too small of an app ecosystem, too oddball of an interface I just, I, I, I can't really uh, recommend it. It's, it, it, buy an Android phone. I just, there's not enough different and new here to make this desirable. I'm sorry to say, Amazon, I'm gonna have to give you a do not buy on the Amazon uh, Fire phone. And now I'm gonna try to find somebody will take it off me. The other negative, of course, AT&T only. That's going to limit it for a lot of people. Well, that's this, uh, That's that for this edition of Before You Buy. Thank you to Sarah Lane, Father Robert Ballas, Sir Tanya Hall. Um, you almost said Harding. I did almost say Tanya Harding. I could tell. You could tell? Yeah. I'm going to have to hit you in the knee for that. Cool. And <laughs> Jason Hal, for your reviews, thanks to you for watching. All the reviews are put up on YouTube youtube.com slash before you buy you can get the whole show at twit.tv slash byb or subscribe you can get it in all of the traditional podcatchers like itunes uh you can also watch us do the show semi live right after security now about 3 p.m pacific 6 p.m eastern time 2200 utc every tuesday afternoon on the twit network thanks for being here oh don't forget you can email us if you have something you'd like us to review byb at twit.tv i'm leo laporte don't forget, remember, you've got to keep it in your brain. It's always time to watch before you buy.